Domino's has been making headlines these days, but not because of their pizza. Guillermo Robles, a blind man, sued the company when he couldn't order a pizza on his phone because the company hadn't made their app compatible with iPhone screen reading software. This is making headlines across the country because the case went all the way up to the Supreme Court. A lot of people would think, this doesn't affect me. But here's the thing, it does. In today's tech-savvy world, the blind and visually impaired are able to access websites and apps just like people would cite. This is partly because the federal government has standards around accessibility, but also because hardware and software is becoming more accessible, like screen readers. Everyone will experience some type of disability in their life. It could be temporary, it could be permanent, or it could be situational. For example, Building apps just for a blind person doesn't help blind people only. Say your mom just went through cataract surgery and is recovering. She has a temporary disability. You can still call her up and she can pick up the phone because apps have features that announce who the callers are. And even better, we're using these features every day, or at least should be when we're driving and just need Google Maps directions read out loud. The fact is, accessible tech makes tech better for everyone. I've been building accessible apps and websites for the blind and visually impaired for years. I started by taking the internationally recognized standards created by the World Wide Web Consortium and continue to do user testing to minimize accessibility features on the products we brought to market. But even I didn't realize I was missing key accessibility features until I hired my first deaf developer. When John joined my company, I opened up myself to be vulnerable and hoped he would be gracious, which he was, as we navigated this space together. Both of us knew the power of technology to improve communications between the two of us, a hearing person and a deaf person. But what I didn't expect was to learn how being inclusive of a deaf person would actually build better communications for entirely hearing teams. I built my company with a commitment to diversity and inclusion, and we needed to figure out how to be inclusive of a deaf person. We tested a variety of products and software and discovered that Zoom video conference tools and an app called Ava worked for us. Zoom leveraged a free service funded by the government called VRS, or Video Relay Service. VRS allows any deaf person who uses American Sign Language to make phone calls and see a live ASL interpreter. The interpreter then can listen to the person on the other line and interpret in real time. So John would be able to call into Zoom with the audio call-in feature and see a live interpreter through VRS. Ava is an app that anyone can download to their phone right now, and it does automated voice-to-text captioning. Both Zoom and Ava automatically generated transcripts of all of our conversations, and this turned out to create much-needed documentation of all the reasons why we were building certain pieces of code in the products we were building. Other tools we tried to use didn't integrate with VRS or hadn't even thought about adding captioning. Overall, we created a work environment that wasn't just inclusive of the deaf, but we were communicating better and then we were creating better products because of that. But building accessible apps isn't about doing it just for better communication and it's the right thing to do. It's profitable, and I mean damn profitable. After the Dutch SNS Bank made accessibility changes to their website, they saw a decrease in calls to their call center by 15%. They saw this reduction and re related it directly to the revised website. Prior to these revisions, they were receiving upwards of 20,000 calls per week, with each call costing between 750 and 1250 euros. The bank estimated their annual savings at 1.7 million euros. Who here enables captions on their screen when they're watching Netflix or any video streaming service? I know I do. <laughs> I don't do it because I'm hard of hearing, yet. I do it because I'm able to absorb more information than I otherwise would have if I didn't have the captions on. 
And as more people lose their hearing over time, features like these will help all of us. 34% of the U.S. population is over the age of 50. That's one-third of the country. And guess what comes with aging? In addition to some wrinkles, our eyesight may begin to weaken along with our hearing, and our cognitive abilities begin to deteriorate. But with these changes, we want to see apps that will account for that and help all of us. So what are some of the things that would be great to have in the design that we see? One, simple and intuitive use. We don't all have the same set of strong English language skills, knowledge of software, or even the same levels of concentration. But apps that have intuitive design are simple to use and help us achieve our goals are apps that we want to use. Two, tolerance for error. As our physical and cognitive abilities deteriorate, we're more likely to make mistakes. Every single person in this room has accidentally tapped or clicked a part of their screen and ended up trapped in a corner. But products where you're not afraid to make mistakes are products that you want to use. And three, size and space for approach. We're not all sitting in front of a computer with a monitor in front of us and a keyboard when we're using tech. So wouldn't you want to use tech that isn't affected by whether you're walking, laying in bed, or doing other activities? Like I said, these are all things that come with aging, but they're also things that are great for the features that we have right now. Everyone's talking about artificial intelligence these days. AI isn't coming out of the ether. It's being built on data sets from real humans right now. And who's involved in these data sets matter, because that is what the future of technology will be based on. If all the data sets that are being built are only being built with white, young, cisgender, able-bodied men, then the future of tech will only be built around and for this one specific group. Data sets have to include everyone and not just the people building it. Now, Domino's might be fighting the case to bring accessibility to their company, but what they don't realize is the millions of dollars they're losing to their competitors. There are 3.4 million people in the U.S. alone who are blind and visually impaired. If each person ordered one pizza a month and took their business elsewhere, Domino's would be losing $408 million a year. If I was a Domino's shareholder, I'd be pretty upset about that. The best products are coming from places where they think deeply about inclusive design and accessibility, and the future of technology depends on it, because designing tech with disabilities in mind turns out to be designing great tech for everyone. Thank you.